I have a copyright claim on my video for apparently using 16 seconds of a Jeezy song that I, spoiler alert, did not actually use. UMG, I presume this to be Universal Music Group, on behalf of Def Jam Recordings is claiming that at this particular time frame of my upload, I am using Let Em Know by Jeezy for approximately 16 seconds. Now, to be fair, this is an automatic content ID claim, which, as many of you know, is a YouTube mechanic that is severely abused and is often mistaken. Yeah, surprise, surprise. But this particular claim doesn't exactly fall neatly into either one of those categories. That's because, get this, I've received and successfully disputed this exact claim before years ago on another video. So, when I received that initial claim years ago, I disputed it. Angrily, I might add. After that, I waited a while, but eventually, the claim was removed and I was good to go. I thought little of uh, the claim afterwards. I figured, hey, I told them it wasn't the right song, there's been a mistake, I presumed wrongly of course, that someone at UMG would take a look at the explanation I gave while they were responding to remove the claim and actually do something about it. Therefore, when I recently uploaded this new longer music mix, I was naturally pretty shocked to see that exact same baloney claim crop up again. I filed a dispute, pretty much the same as before, and I asked myself, why does it keep getting flagged like this? This track is licensed Creative Commons with Attribution, it should be fine. For reference, that Creative Commons track is Light Years by Stellar Drone, which I found on a nice site called Free Music Archive. Pretty neat. Give it a listen. So I also decided I'd give the Jeezy track a listen, see what I could find, and lo and behold, there was. Jeezy's track, Let Him Know, has Stellar Drone's Light Years in the background. I put two and two together and I figured this. Jeezy thought, hey, this track is pretty fire, I'll throw some lyrics over it, and it'll kill. And it did. Props. When Jeezy released his track, though, he probably did it under the UMG-owned Def Jam Recordings label or something to that effect, and UMG put it into the YouTube Content ID system, as they do with probably all of their music. Nothing wrong yet, except for the fact that, if all that is true, then the party or parties that submitted that track to the system would be, probably unknowingly, claiming copyright over a track they do not in fact own the rights to. In this case, the rights to the music in the background of Let Em Know belong to Stellar Drone, and they license the track as Creative Commons with attribution. You can't change that afterwards. Now, I don't think Stellar Drone gave permission, but who knows? Uh, I, I don't see attribution anywhere in the description for Let em, the Let Em Know track by Jeezy, so either they reach an agreement behind closed doors, which is possible and would be fair, or perhaps the with attribution part was lost somewhere along the way in production. I really couldn't tell you. None of this is meant to cast suspicion or wish ill will on anyone, least of all Jeezy, who has a respectable career as an artist and could probably very easily kick my ass. Uh, I sincerely doubt Jeezy had anything to do with submitting the track to the content ID system on YouTube. It's more likely that this is a continued corporate oversight, if you ask me. But it presents a growing, persistent threat to creators here on YouTube, which is false content ID matches. I uploaded music to my channel for a few years and I was constantly plagued by false positives matching the tracks I had meticulously combed through to ensure were licensed as free to use or a creative commons of some sort. Uh, most of these matches were from smaller artists who had done the same thing as Jeezy, which is to sample one of those aforementioned creative commons tracks for their own music, and I, I've got nothing against it personally. I'm not trying to be the arbiter of copyright in those instances. Plenty of great songs sampled other tracks whether they asked or not. Uh, that's not, you know, for me to say anything about. That's art, you know, sometimes, right? Uh, but those corporations that license those tracks or distribute them for them are trying to be the arbiter, even though they have no right to in these instances, because the artist submits their track to a label or a distributor or whatever service these days, churn out music from indie artists for a quick buck, and that company submits the track to YouTube's content ID system. We creators have no recourse except to send a request that's supposed to be signed with our real name, a request that they can then deny without any justifiable cause at a whim. Most of the time though, someone checks the claim dispute, realizes the automatic claim was wrong, and it goes away. But it can escrow your monetization for up to 30 days while you wait, leaving you anxiously wondering if on the 29th day, some faceless individual will just outright say, yeah, nah, and keep taking your video's monetization. Warning, hot take incoming. Okay, so, I don't personally believe that YouTube is entirely to blame here. Yeah, yeah, I know, hear me out. They're somewhat to blame, but not entirely. YouTube's official stance on the load of false or outright malicious comments is that they can't have a stance on it because of legal reasons. And that's fair, if you ask me, considering they got sued for hosting a metric buttload of no-no stuff like copyright material, and their defense was, rightfully so in my opinion, that YouTube was basically just an aggregator of user content. It was not necessarily endorsed by YouTube as a company. 
Of course, probably to avoid further issues down the road, YouTube implemented the content ID system to detect copyrighted work more automatically. By feeding the copyrighted work into the system and comparing it against the absolute deluge of videos that are uploaded to the site every moment of every day, including this very one and every one you post. The result is an incredible imbalance where content creators, artists, and even regular uploaders on YouTube may ultimately have to take such fraudulent claims to court over a YouTube video if they want any sort of action, but bad actors, lazy corporations, and greedy individuals can spend a few minutes of their day filing a claim, scooping up creators' earnings, or even outright have the video removed, and there's nothing you can do about it but beg for them not to do it. The law needs to change. I think that the automatic content ID system is actually pretty neat, and it could be used to help smaller creators and artists ensure that they are properly compensated for their work. Uh, but in you know the case of repeat false claim offenders who are not taking the proper steps to remove works for which they do not own the copyright wholly, there should be repercussions, the least of which should be that they are barred from using the system for some period of time. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. I've got another video linked for you here on the end screen now. If you enjoyed my soapbox rant, you may enjoy the music mix that started the dispute in the first place. It's a combined mix of over 13 hours, royalty-free, synth-wavy music, and it makes for great background noise on your streams or videos. Be sure to credit the original artists. With that said, hope this was all worth a listen. If so, please consider subscribing to my channel. Every single bit helps me out immensely. Have a good one.